The whispers started after sunset. Low, sibilant murmurs that slithered through the night. At first I thought they were the wind rustling the leaves of the old baobab tree outside my window. But the wind died down, and the whispers remained. They seemed to coil around me, cold and insidious. I left the village, seeking solace in the familiar scent of the earth and the comforting silence of the fields. But the whispers followed. They seemed to rise from the very ground beneath my feet. My name, uttered in hushed tones, sent shivers down my spine. I quickened my pace, fear lending speed to my steps. Just the wind, I muttered, trying to convince myself. But deep down I knew this was something different, something ancient and evil. The whispers followed me home. They wormed their way into my dreams, turning sleep into a waking nightmare. I woke up each morning with a gasp, my heart pounding, the whispers still echoing in my ears. Kojo, my uncle, was a man of the forest. His skin, the color of rich earth, bore the marks of countless seasons spent beneath the sun and stars. He was the best hunter in our village, his arrows never missing their mark. Some whispered that he had a gift, a connection with the spirits of the forest. They said he could speak to the animals, could feel the pulse of the earth beneath his feet. The forest provides, Kojo would say, his voice deep and resonant as the beat of a war drum. But she demands respect. She demands balance. He taught me the ways of the hunt, how to track a gazelle by the whisper of its hooves on dry leaves, how to read the language of the birds. But more importantly, he taught me to respect the forest and all that dwelled within its shadowy embrace. The dry season had been long and harsh. The rains had failed to come, leaving the earth parched and cracked. Our crops withered and died, and the once abundant game had vanished into the depths of the forest. Hunger gnawed at our bellies, a constant aching reminder of the season's cruelty. The elders spoke in hushed tones of lean times past, of villages decimated by famine. A sense of desperation hung heavy in the air, thick and suffocating as the dust that swirled through the village. We needed food, and we needed it now. Kojo, ever the provider, announced his intention to venture into the Forbidden Forest, a place of dark legend and ancient magic, where even the bravest hunters feared to tread. I had always been forbidden from entering the Forbidden Forest. It is a place of shadows and whispers, my mother would say, her voice laced with fear, a place where spirits roam free. But desperation had a way of silencing even the most primal fears. When Kojo announced his expedition, I stepped forward, my voice surprisingly steady. I will go with you, I said. My chin held high, though my heart hammered against my ribs. Kojo looked at me, his dark eyes unreadable. After what felt like an eternity, he nodded, a slow, deliberate movement. The next morning, armed with our spears and bows, we set off into the forest, leaving behind the familiar sights and sounds of the village. Each step took us deeper into the unknown, the air growing heavy with the scent of decay and the oppressive silence of the wild. The deeper we ventured into the forest, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. The air, thick with humidity, seemed to cling to us, stealing our breath. The usual cacophony of the jungle was absent. No birdsong broke the silence, no insects hummed among the leaves, even the wind seemed to avoid this cursed place. Something isn't right. I whispered, my voice tight with unease. Kojo said nothing, but I saw him touch the amulet he always wore around his neck, a small, carved wooden figure of a bird in flight. We pressed on, our footsteps muffled by the carpet of decaying leaves beneath our feet. The silence was unnerving. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath, watching us, waiting. The cave was hidden behind a curtain of vines, its entrance almost completely obscured from view. We stumbled upon it by chance, drawn by a cold draught that emanated from its depths. The air around the cave was different, colder, and heavy with a musk that sent shivers down my spine. It smelled of damp earth, of things long dead and best forgotten. This is a place of power, Kojo said, his voice barely a whisper. He stared at the cave entrance, his eyes narrowed, as if trying to pierce the darkness within. I could feel a strange energy emanating from the cave, a palpable aura of menace and mystery. Fear warred with curiosity within me. I wanted to turn back, to flee this place of shadows and whispers, but something held me rooted to the spot, 
a morbid fascination with the secrets that lay hidden within the cave's depths. Kojo, his eyes gleaming with an unsettling light, pushed aside the vines and stepped towards the cave entrance. Wait, I hissed, my hand shooting out to grab his arm. We should not disturb this place. But Kojo was undeterred. He shook me off, his grip surprisingly strong. The spirits have guided us here for a reason, he said, his voice echoing strangely in the stillness. He pulled a torch from his bag and lit it, the flames casting flickering shadows that danced and writhed on the cave walls. I hesitated for a moment, fear battling with a strange sense of compulsion. Something was pulling me towards the cave, urging me to follow Kojo into the darkness. I took a deep breath and stepped across the threshold, the whispers seeming to intensify, swirling around me like a swarm of angry bees.